Well, good morning, everyone. Today, I travelled about 60 miles west of my home in the Cotswolds to Hergis Ridge here in the Welsh borders. Hergis Ridge runs for five miles from Gladestree in Wales to Kington in Herefordshire, and the footpath follows the Offers Dyke National Trail. It's a very remote and incredibly beautiful area with stunning views all along the route. And it has some very interesting features and a fascinating history too. I'm here to walk in the footsteps of the musician Mike Oldfield, who 50 years ago escaped to this rural paradise from the pressures of his newly found fame and success, having released one of the biggest selling albums of all time, Tubular Bells. In early 1974, this shy, introvert and very young musician, Mike Oldfield, escaped the bright lights of London to live remotely and in peaceful solitude on a hill facing Hergis Ridge. He came here to find inspiration for his follow-up album to Tubular Bells, which he eventually ended up calling Hergis Ridge, having been captivated by the sheer beauty of his newfound environment. I want to show you what it was about this area that inspired Mike Oldfield to write his second album and why people come here still to enjoy the beauty and serenity that it has to offer. Well, we're going to be walking for about five miles this afternoon and it's such a su lovely sunny day. So I'm really hoping to show you how beautiful and peaceful and serene this area is on Hergis Ridge. Sorry about the wind noise from time to time, but obviously, you know, we are quite high up and we're very exposed. So I hope it doesn't spoil things too much. Hergis Ridge is just one of those lovely places that you can see why people escape to and find inspiration in nature. So let's go and see what Hergis Ridge has got to offer. about the wind noise folks I've got a mic separate mic on but it's very windy up here we're getting to the top of Burgess Ridge summit and the sun is out and uh, yeah we're back on off this dike path we had a little bit of a, a detour but yeah look at that absolutely beautiful Welsh mountains hills That's the way we've come from, from Blade Street near Hay on Wye. but here it's uh, almost disappeared. Anyway, onwards and upwards along Hergis Ridge.
One of the other lovely things about Hergis Ridge are the wild ponies and horses that live here all year round, through wind and rain, through snow, through all the seasons. They're beautiful creatures, and I'm going to try and get some footage of them close up, but they are quite shy. They don't see that many people up here, and I've got to be very careful. But let's go and meet the wild ponies of Hergis Ridge. Now we're coming up to another interesting um, landmark on Hergis Ridge. And these are what's known as the monkey puzzle trees. There's nine of them, and they can be seen from all over this hillside. They were planted by Dick Banks, and Dick Banks and his family own Hergis Court, which is a fortified manor house in the southwest end of the Hergis Croft estate. Dick Banks travelled to South America and particularly to Chile where these trees are native and he wanted to plant these on Hergis Ridge so that everybody could enjoy them when they came and walked up here. And this is the result of his hard work, nine beautiful trees. 
Now we're going to explore these trees in a little bit more as we get closer. But the other thing to say about Dick Banks and Hergis Court is that the manor house is reputed to be haunted by a great black hound known as the Black Dog of Hergist. And this is believed to be the inspiration for Arthur Conan Doyle's Hound of the Baskervilles story. And we'll talk more about that in a moment too. So let's go and look at these lovely monkey puzzle trees. And now for the legend of the ghostly black dog who's said by some to roam on Hergish Ridge at night. At the end of the 15th century, Thomas Vaughan, an evil squire who lived at Hergish's court, went by the name of Black Vaughan. He fought in the War of the Roses at the Battle of Banbury in 1489, where he was brutally decapitated. No sooner had his head hit the ground, his loyal black bloodhound picked up his master's head in his teeth and ran back to Hergis court. It is said the ghost of Black Vaughan remained at large, taking the form of a black bull that rampaged around the area and come to buy a fearsome black hound. According to local tradition, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle heard about this legend from the Baskerville family who lived nearby at Baskerville Hall and were friends with the author. And it was the inspiration for his book, The Hound of the Baskervilles. And we're coming to the end of our walk now as we descend Hergis Ridge towards Kington. And apologies for the wobbly picture, but my stabiliser, the gimbal that I use, has run out of battery power. To the left is Bradner Hill, and higher up on this hill is the Beacon, the house Mike Oldfield bought in early 1974 to escape the pressures of his newfound fame and success. He lived a simple life here, refused to answer the phone, and ignoring Richard Branson's pleas for his new protégé to do interviews and perform live his worldwide hit. Tubular bells. 
Now, just in the distance is the beacon. And if I zoom in and you look carefully, there's two white buildings by the clump of trees. It's the second one with the triangular roof. That's the beacon. Mike Oldfield would prefer to walk on Hercus Ridge, ride on horseback and fly his gliders remote control planes than speak to the press about his music. He played simple folk tunes at a local restaurant at Penrose Court in exchange for free food and drink. Other than his time spent on Hergus, right, Hergus Ridge, Mike was at his rural retreat writing the rock follow-up album Hergus Ridge, released in August 74, which knocked Tudor Bells off the number one slot in the album charts and was another huge hit for Virgin Records. His third album, Omidorn, was also written at the Beacon and recorded there too in his newly built studio. Mike Oldfield released many more albums over the next 50 years, but few have captured the natural beauty and rural simplicity that was inspired by living here in the Welsh borders and is so captivating when you listen to these two albums. Mike is now retired from making music and enjoying life living in the Bahamas worlds apart from here in rural Wales. For fans around the world, Hergis Ridge is a very special place and they visit often to enjoy the beauty and magic of this area, which is immortalised on the two albums that came after Tubular Bells. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the beauty of Hergis Ridge here in the Welsh borders and that maybe one day you'll come and visit soon. Thank you for watching, please share, like and subscribe and I'll see you for another video very soon. Next time I'll be back in the Cotswolds, but thanks again, all the best, take care, bye bye.